from front of house to center stage for over 25 years, Earthworks microphones have sculpted the sounds of your favorite concerts, venues, and performances. Earthworks Audio is a sponsor of the Tech Arts Podcast. We are so happy to have them on board and excited to promote the new Earthworks SR117 vocal mic and capsules. To find out more about Earthworks Audio or to get your hands on this mic, go to earthworksaudio.com. That's earthworksaudio.com. Capturing emotion with sound. Earthworksaudio.com. This is the Tech Arts Podcast, where we talk about tech, leadership, and all things that concern church audio, video, and lighting. Welcome to the Tech Arts Podcast and the Earthworks Audio Studios. My name is DL, so glad to have you joining us today. Today's episode is going to help a lot of people. It's on in-ears. The entire episode is dedicated to this, and if you use in-ears or are thinking of using in-ears, you don't want to miss this episode. We're calling it the art of in-ears. But before we start talking about that subject, I want to give a special shout out to Philo Conference. I spoke at Philo Conference a few weeks ago, and I want to take a second to thank Todd Elliott and the entire team for this invite. I had a blast and learned a lot. This team really knows how to do a conference. If you've not signed up for Philo 2025, make sure you do so now by going to philo.org. If you're a tech, worship pastor, creative arts pastor, or a live production volunteer, this conference is a must-attend event. Book your tickets today by going to philo.org. Hey, on our last podcast, we gave away a Luminode. I want to give a shout out to our winner, Mark from Village Church in Bartlett, Illinois. Congrats on winning the Luminode. And a special thank you to Anthony Stofflet and the Luminex AC Lighting team for allowing us to give away a Luminode. If you want to have a shot at winning free stuff, be sure to follow us on our social media platforms and sign up for the newsletter. You can do all of that by going to audiovideolighting.com. Once again, that's audiovideolighting.com. I said earlier we're dedicating today's podcast to the art of in-ears. So without further delay, let's kick the podcast off by focusing our tech tip on a company that makes in-ears and has been there since the beginning. Today's church tech tip is Ultimate Ears. Joining us today to talk more about this is Tiago Costa. Tiago, welcome to the Tech Arts Podcast. Thank you. Hey man, tell us a little bit about Ultimate Ears. Well, Ultimate Ears is uh, one of the brands uh, that makes in-ear monitors. It's actually the pioneer in the uh, in the industry, uh, Ultimate Ears started in 1995. Next year, uh, in 2025, we're going to be 30, which is uh, incredible. Uh, it started in the, the back of the of the tour bus of Van Halen when the engineer Jerry Harvey uh, decided to start creating something so they could use as monitors instead of using the wedges, the traditional floor monitors. Uh, And then that's where it started. So, Tiago, did you say it started with Van Halen? Yes. That's one of my favorite bands. That's so cool. So Jerry Harvey started that on the tour with Van Halen, kind of figured out. That is correct. uh, So Jerry was the the audio engineer for for the band. And, uh, And then they were realizing that, you know, they were overusing their ears with a lot of stage noise and uh, obviously playing rock. And uh, uh, you can imagine, you know, especially way back then, 30 years ago, they were using huge amps on stage and drums, like everything was really loud. And then they were starting to, it takes a toll when you overuse, you know, exposed to so much noise for a long time. And so they, started brainstorming and then Jerry put the, the first, the first uh, prototype together. Uh, uh, and then uh, from there in 1995, that was, I believe in 94, 
in 1995, the official, uh, Jerry officially opened Ultimate Ears. Well, what makes Ultimate Ears so special? So, you know, I'm sitting, at, you know, listening to this podcast. I'm another church. Why should I go in the direction of Ultimate Ears as opposed to one of the hundreds of other in-ear companies that are out there? <laughs> That's a great question. Uh, literally, uh, we learned recently that worldwide there are over 300 companies making in-ear monitors. Obviously, a lot of just mom and pop that just start up, you know, they're trying to get off the ground. Uh, but there are a lot of people trying uh, into the market. Uh, uh, and uh, But there are some major players. We, we all know some other brands out there that are doing a great job. Um, and uh, I, I usually tell people who come ask me this question, I get asked this question a lot. Like, obviously, we're not the only company that knows how to make in-ear monitors at this point. And when you're choosing uh, an in-ear monitor for, for you, uh, unless you have some really good critical ear, um, you're, you're splitting hair in terms of how you choose the right model for you. Um, I really believe the Ultimate Ears creates great product. We have some really good sounding in-ear monitors. We have a, a series of, of different uh, models that we, we, we have different sound signatures. Each model has a specific sound signature or an EQ profile. So basically, what we sell any company, not just Ultimate Ears, any com what we sell to, you, to the customer is sound. We, we sell you how it sounds. Now, obviously, there are a lot of details, uh, technical details, and you know, a lot of people want to know, oh, how many drivers this one has? And, and they want to compare, oh, how does your triple driver compare to this other brand triple driver? And it's hard to compare because it's not, oh, we're not comparing just the three drivers. We're comparing how they are EQ'd. What is the quality of those drivers? Uh, how are they aligned in phase uh, to make sure that they deliver a specific sound signature? So that's what makes everything different. Now, what what makes Ultimate Ears different than anybody anybody else at this point is not just the great product that you get. It is, I believe, the service, the customer service that would really differentiate Ultimate Ears from from anybody else. First of all, obviously, we've been there longer than anybody else. So every major step that happens with India monitors usually happens at Ultimate Years first. Uh, we were the first ones to start doing 3D printing, and then we created a technology that, uh, that allows us to also, also scan your ears with a 3D scanner. Uh, obviously, we only have that locally, or when I'm traveling around the country with a scanner, I will, I will scan a a worship team or or a band somewhere but um it usually w when when there is is happening in terms of innovation ultimate years is ahead of the game um but uh but really the customer service is 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 really really amazing our turnaround time is usually awesome our regular turnaround time is 10 business days uh for a new set uh other brands out there that usually start at five to six weeks and um, a repair to uh, repair team is really, really on it. Really good. We're trying to, to get it out uh, back to people's ears because we know everybody's trying to use them, you know, especially church people. We use them weekly. So it's very important. Yeah. I think service is a big deal because, you know, you're putting it in your ear and taking it out all the time. It's just going to break. Things are going to break. But if you've ever seen the Ultimate Ear brand, I've actually held them in my hand before. They're built really solid, really nice. Um, they come with some excellent features. You mentioned the multiple driver thing, and we'll get into that a little bit more uh, later. But uh, the, just the service piece of Ultimate Ears is a big deal yeah. um, because the way you use them and the way worship team tends to abuse them, you want to have service kind of there ready to go. But on the driver thing, it's like the number one question I get asked multiple drivers. Like I've got to have 8,000 drivers in my ear in order for this to sound good. 
Um, just talk about that just for just a minute or two on multiple drivers and, and number one, how it makes a difference in your ears. Yeah, that is also. I also get asked the question a lot. <laughs> um, so, and, and now you can get what? 23 and a half drivers in an ear. I mean, it's crazy. <laughs> so the, the most we have is actually the first, the first in the industry, we have 21 drivers. It was, is the UE premiere and it was released last year in 2023 and uh, and uh, it's, it's pretty amazing. But well, yeah, let me talk a little bit about the driver. So I'm going to try to dumb down a little bit the answer so everybody can follow and understand what, what drivers are, right? Because sometimes we say, oh, this one has this many drivers and people have no idea what, the, what that actually is. So drivers are basically speakers. They are very small micro speakers. They are built to deliver sound. So, so for example, imagine this is a speaker and I am pushing some sound out of this speaker. And it sounds okay. You can hear, you know, things. And then I decide to add a, another speaker, which is a different color, as you can see. I just added a different speaker over here, and I put them together, and I'm pushing the same sound that was playing. Well, because now I have two speakers, what I'm going to have to do I'm gonna have, probably have to turn down a little bit of the volume because I don't. I have two speakers trying to push the same si the same amount of sound, and also you can divide the frequencies that they are. Let's say this speaker can actually deliver a better clarity, you know, crisp sound, which is the highs or mids, and this one is responsible for more like low end. So you kind of divide, you don't necessarily, it depends on how many speakers start adding, you can start dividing those frequencies and say, hey, you're responsible for this frequency here. This is your job and this is your job. And then when you do that, uh, it allows the sound to have a lot more depth and uh, definition. Um, but that come that brings us to other other things as well. It's not just about of how many speakers. Uh, I I love the dual driver that we have. It's the intro model that we have. The UE five it is actually the oldest sound signature that we we've have uh, we have in our line. It Jerry did it like way back then. It's been 20, 20 plus years, almost I believe probably twenty five years. Uh, that has been in line and it's still there and we still use it. It's great. It sounds really good. Now, if you want to add a little more detail here and there, you're going to start adding new drivers to hear a little more uh, definition. Now, people want to know, uh, but what should I get uh, if I want to hear? I play the keyboard. Which one should I get? And a lot of people, including the, all, all the, all the in-ear brands, they try to market to musicians saying, oh, if you are a keyboard player, you should get this one. If you're a guitar player, you should get this one. If you're a bass player, you should get this one, which is probably a good guesstimation uh, of, of how that works, but not really very musical, in my opinion, uh, because we all have different way of interpreting frequency. So if I tell you, you have to have this one because this one is the best one. That is probably the best one for how I hear, for how I like to hear and how I interpret. And, you know, even with age, you start losing some, some frequency. So it's not always the same for everybody. But uh, the best way, the best scenario is when... If you can meet with me, for example, I will, I will have all the demos and you will sit down and listen and see which one works for you be better sonically. Uh, that is the best scenario. That is not always the case because people live all over the country, all over the world. I help people all over the world uh, get any monitors. So, but uh, what I try to do, uh, I've been working with Ultima Year since 2013. It's been uh, basically 11 years. It was May of 2013. And um, 
So it's been a minute. So I, I, I have a lot of experience. I, I'm also a musician, producer, worship pastor. So I know, I understand music in a different way. So I try to understand what people are telling me, what are their needs in terms of what they want to hear. And then when I ask the question, hey, what would you like to hear? When you, uh, uh, what kind of frequencies do you love? People want to tell me what they want in their mix. <laughs> and I always tell them, well, you can buy any of the models and then mix that way. <laughs> because mixing, it's something that you can learn how to do it in any sound signature. Now, to make it sound good and in the way that, it, that it's pleasing your ears, that has to do with the sound signature. Is it warm in the mids? Is that what you're looking for? Is that that gives you a little bit of a, a low end because you want to feel the 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 music? So that's what drivers do. Um, the more drivers don't necessarily mean better; it means more expensive. That's for sure. You've sold me. <laughs> I want to move forward. How does our audience get in touch with you uh, so that they can buy an ultimate ear? Well, uh, I'm always available. You can go to uh, myinears.com. Uh, www.myinears.com or hit me up on Instagram as well. It's going to be at myinears. And um, it's usually very easy to uh, get in touch with me. Uh, uh, there is a chat on the website that you can uh, start uh, writing there and I will be able to respond to you promptly. I love helping people understand, educating people on how to properly using, uh, how to properly use India monitors and uh, make sure that you have uh, not only a good sound signature, but you have a proper mix and a proper understanding you know, of how to use the uh, what, what you invested on. Yes, yeah, so that website again, everybody, is myinears.com. And if you can't tell, Tiago walks you through the process. Part of that service and support of Ultimate Ears, he makes sure that you get the right in-ear for your need. And you don't necessarily need the 21 driver in-ear system. He will make sure it fits who you are. And, you know, if you're a singer, a bass player, a keyboard player, they walk you through that and make sure that you get the right system for you. Again, that website, myinears.com. Tiago, I know you have a lot of experience in this area, and I feel like many churches need education on how to use in-ears properly. Would you mind staying on and talking to us a little bit more about in-ears? Absolutely. Stay tuned. In our next segment, Tiago, he'll talk to us about how to properly use in-ears and why audience mics are important. If your church uses in-ears or is thinking about getting in-ears, you don't want to miss this segment. It all starts right after these messages from our sponsors. Hang on. From sold out stadiums to intimate live performance venues, sound engineers agree on one thing for the best digital mixing consoles for live sound. The only name that matters is Digico. As the recognized worldwide standard for live audio mixing, Digico consoles are renowned for their industry leading sound quality and ease of use. Whether your application is in a church, broadcast, theater, corporate, sports, or installed sound, Digico offers compact and affordable products from the S21 all the way up to the pioneering power of the Quantum 852. Digico delivers the workflow, the feature set, and the absolute reliability that the world's biggest tours and programs have come to rely upon. If you're looking for a sound console, look to Digico for your answer. For more information on Digico, go to digico.biz. That's digico.biz. With Sermon Shot's church-specific AI, sermon highlights don't go unnoticed. Easily transform your sermons into 10-plus bite-sized clips ready for social media. It doesn't stop there. Refine each clip by adding or removing video sections, give them your unique touch with colors, fonts, design edits, and create the goosebump moment with background music. Elevate your message and reach hearts locally and globally. Start today by going to sermonshots.com. What's next you? 
We get asked that all the time. MXU is the platform for churches to recruit, train, and retain their volunteer teams. It starts with our vast content library with discipline-specific training videos. You can assign videos to team members, upload your own videos, and you can even organize them into courses for a more guided approach. You can keep track of a volunteer's watch progress and check in when they might be falling behind. And with groups, you can keep track of multiple teams and assign roles to specific users to give them the ability to manage your volunteer team. It doesn't matter if you're a team of five or 50, MXU will help you care for and stay on top of training for each volunteer. This is MXU, used to help churches recruit, train, and retain their volunteer teams. Join the community and start using MXU for free today. Luminex Network Intelligence manufactures data distribution equipment for professional lighting, audio, and video applications. Luminex offers a complete range of network switches, converters, nodes, and DMX splitters providing AV designers and technicians with cutting-edge technology to build complete data distribution systems for churches, big events, or large venues. Through products like the Luminode, Luminex keeps it simple and allows the user to easily easily control what they need to do or how they need to do it. Whatever your configuration is today, or whatever your configuration is in the future, Luminex is designed for today, but built for tomorrow. Luminex Network Intelligence, AV networking made easy. For more information, go to aclighting.com. That's aclighting.com. From front of house to center stage, for over 25 years, Earthworks microphones have sculpted the sounds of your favorite concerts, venues, and performances. Earthworks Audio is a sponsor of the Tech Arts Podcast. We are so happy to have them on board and excited to promote the new Earthworks SR117 vocal mic and capsules. To find out more about Earthworks Audio or to get your hands on this mic, go to earthworksaudio.com. That's earthworksaudio.com. Capturing emotion with sound. earthworksaudio.com. Our main sponsor is Digital Grade Commission Ministries. Whether you need help building a team, finding the right gear, or just better understanding the church tech world, DGCM is here for you. Because they are a 501c3 donor-sponsored organization, they come to your church for free and do an assessment of your tech, visitor engagement, and online streaming. Plus, we give away free gear. Be sure to go to audiovideolighting.com and register your email today. This will sign you up for all of the free giveaways and give you first access to everything we offer for free. If you want free resources, training, or consulting, contact Digital Great Commission Ministries today by going to audiovideolighting.com. That's audiovideolighting.com. Welcome back to the Tech Arts Podcast. Today, we're talking with Tiago Costa from MyInEars.com. He is representing Ultimate Ears House of Worship Division. Tiago, welcome back to the Tech Arts Podcast. Thank you. Good to be here. So we talked a little bit about Ultimate Ears in the prior segment and um, why it's a great company and why you should um, buy uh, from Ultimate Ears. Uh, but before we jump into kind of why I should use in-ears and how to properly use in-ears and things of that nature, tell us a little bit about yourself, your experience, what's your street cred? Well, I started early in ministry. I've been uh, in ministry for many, many years. I'm originally from Brazil. I moved here to the U.S. in 2000, and I've been working as a worship pastor for many, many years. Uh, I worked in full-time ministry for about 23 years and then i um i was introduced uh to ultimate years by a guy called rick machal who was the worship pastor at saddleback church for many years and he was my good friend and mentor and uh he had a great relationship with ultimate years which happens to be 
around the corner from where we live here in, in Southern California. And then he brought me in and he said, hey, Tiago is a guy who uh, knows a lot of people. Um, he has um, uh, a lot of contacts. He speaks, you know, three languages. And, uh, and uh, I, he brought me in and vouched for me at Ultimate Years. And uh, I've been working with them, helping them develop the House of Worship uh, for the last 10 plus years. And uh, it's been great. He speaks three languages, you said? Yeah. I, I can barely master uh, one language, my <laughs> language, the English language. I have so much respect for people who speak three languages, especially because, you know, when people are talking in a different language, I'm like, um, I wonder what they're saying. I would love to always be that person who could understand them and then not know what I'm saying. Anyway, that's a different subject. <laughs> them not know what I'm, <laughs> that I'm actually able to understand them. But yeah, uh, maybe one day I'll master the English language and uh, get that one down. <laughs> uh, uh, me too. <laughs> uh, so, Tiago, why why should I use in ears? You know, you got a church out there. I uh, actually just visited one a couple of weeks ago. They they're using wedges, uh, and I said, hey, you know, maybe you guys should look at at switching over to in ears. They're having this the stage noise issue, and they're like, I don't know. Why? I mean, you know, why? Tell us, sell us. Why should we use in ears? Uh, so help churches out there understand why it helps. This whole in ears things at church, uh, th this whole transition start ha actually happening uh, for real within the last fifteen years. I would say ten to fifteen years. A lot of churches are like completely moving to in ear monitors. Uh, the the larger churches, the mega churches. They have been using in ear monitors for, for for longer than that, for 20 plus years. But um, you know, I think before I even answer why a church would need in ear monitors is why you would need in ear monitors. Because in ear monitors was made so you can save your hearing. Um uh today uh we are exposed to a lot of noise when we go play at on, on on a stage a lot of churches they're going to have multiple services so you will get there early in the morning and then you're going to have a run through a sound check run through and then multiple services when you don't have proper protection you are going to start to have issues with your hearing that is i think the main reason uh why i i, I think someone should consider any monitors is for hearing protection. You want to make sure that you have longevity uh, uh, in your ministry and uh, in your career. If you're a professional musician, singer, uh, in but churches, I think churches will, will will get a huge bonus because a lot of their, of our churches are not really um, treated to have live sound. Let's start with that. And then uh, when you have idiom monitors, you reduce a lot of, you basically get rid of all the speakers that were on stage. And that helps immensely clean up the sound uh, of the entire room. Uh, the front of house will suddenly start sounding much, much better and cleaner. And the sound is going to be much, much better for, for every, everyone. You start to eliminate some of the feedback issues too, Correct. that the typical wedges uh, bring to the game. But it's funny you said, um, and probably not funny, it's kind of cool that you said uh, that in-ears help protect your ears because um, the churches I visit that aren't using in-ears kind of use the opposite argument. It's like, hey, if I'm putting something in my ear and I'm turning it up, isn't that damaging my ears? Uh, so I think that leads me kind of to the next thing I want to talk to you about. And that is, how do you properly use in-ears? Because if they're properly used, they protect your ear from all of that noise that's going on, just like you talked about. So talk a little bit about that. How do you properly use in-ears? Answering your question, two things. One is I am a huge advocate for custom in-ear monitors. Okay. And I know a lot of churches are going to say, hey, we're all going to India monitors now. And then everyone rushes to Amazon and they will buy whatever cheap <laughs> yeah. set they can find over there. 
I, I have seen so many churches and so many people using Apple earbuds as monitors. And what that, what, the damage that, that, that can, can really make to you, it's actually worse than if you were just using wedges and didn't have anything. So, Tiago, explain custom. What do you mean by custom in your monitors? So custom is this. Uh, this is a custom in your monitor. Uh, it was made for my ears. Uh, the molds, uh, we took the molds out of my ears and then it's made for me. This is the shape of my ear. This will fit no one else but me. And um, so it's very important because why customs? Because when you have this custom to your ears, it will give you the proper seal. Okay. When you put this in, you're only going to hear what is coming into your monitors. So you can be you can be singing, for example, or playing another instrument right in front of the cymbals and the drum set behind you, and that's not going to aff affect you in any way. Uh, you're not going to be bothered by what, what they're doing behind you because you only hear what you have in your monitor feed. Um, so this is, this is what custom in-ears is. So the way people get custom is they usually go to an audiologist and they will get um, they will get the uh, the molds done. That they're gonna put some some I would say some. It looks like play doh. They put some play doh inside your ears, and then they will take it out, and then that's your your mold. Yeah, I've had it done. It's it's the weirdest feeling <laughs> in the world. They will send those molds to us, and then we'll we'll make the 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 custom in ears. Uh, I personally work with a three D scanner. So there is no weird feeling <laughs> like you were saying, like I will just, uh, sit, you're going to sit and I'm going to go with a, with a scanner and get a, the molds of your ears done, uh, in 3d. And then it's a digital molds. It also, it's not never going to go bad. So, uh, we'll, we'll have it forever and whatever you need. Yeah. Plus it looks nice. So you don't have this big bulky headphone. Yeah. On your <laughs> on your head, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to hit you up, Tiago. Get some get some custom in ears for me. Um, so first thing, custom. I think that's uh, you know to properly use in ears and block out some of the things that are going on around you. Um, get custom um, molds. But let's say a church can't afford to get custom molds, but they want to switch to in ears because they just have a lot of stage noise and front of house needs to you know needs to help. Um, a little love for front of house and get rid of some of that stage noise. So what are some other things that are important to when properly using uh, in-ears? If you can, get the best that, that you can that is like a universal fit, okay, as long as it fits your ears. We have a, a line that was actually just released, this NAM, a few months ago, uh, NAM 2024. Uh, that is, uh, we have three different models, the UE150, UE250, and UE350. Uh, those are the models, and they're great. They sound really good. Uh, they don't seal completely, but it's one of the best fitting for your ears without being customs, and they sound really good. Now, to answer your question a little better, I think the, one of the most important things that you can do is to learn how to properly use your in-ears because sometimes you make an investment in buying something that is really good quality and then you get to church you plug your in-ears and they sound terrible and that is because you know within that that transition that was from wedges to in-ears that was never a real a real good transition in terms of teaching people, educating people, hey, you're going to have to sometimes create your own mix. And uh, for me, because I work with production, it's a no brainer. I never needed to have an education about this when I got to the church to create my mix for my ears. It was an easy thing, but a lot of people struggle with that. So the first thing I would like to tell you is, don't be afraid to ask for help. Uh, your audio engineer will be more than happy to help. I hope so. 
Uh, but but we're more than happy to help you create a good mix, a baseline mix. If you can, you need to have a stereo mix. And I'm gonna probably get in trouble here with uh, with the tech team, or not with the tech team, but like with the with the pastors, uh, executive ch pastors of the church, because that be starts becoming a little more expensive to get the right gear for the church. Uh, uh, a lot, a lot of the soundboards they don't have enough auxiliaries that will allow you to have multiple stereo mixes. Um, but if this is the, the the right way to do it, when you have a mono mix, it's like buying a really nice 4K TV and watching in black and white. Uh, you have no perspective, no depth. So when you have a stereo mix, you create your mix and then you, for example, I'm singing and I play my guitar. So my voice is right here in the middle, but the BGV lady that is singing with me she is going to be like here and the other person on my right side is going to be here and then i'm the drums for example the kick drum is going to be dead center over here but i'm going to spread out the other things the snare as well the snare is in the middle but everything else is spread out um the electric guitar which i'm not playing is going to be tucked in somewhere to the side i'm going to start spreading things in my mix so not everything is here because when you hear everything in one place and you're trying to sing or play your instrument, you're going to try to push your volume way high in order to hear yourself. I think that's where it comes down to, you know, how many ears do you have? Two. How, how do you naturally listen to things in the world? In stereo, you hear it left, right, behind you. Uh, immersive is a is a big word nowadays. That's that's how you naturally hear things. And I think when we talk about how to properly use in ears, it's a lot of times about volume mitigation, meaning how do I run my ears at the lowest volume that I can, but yet still hear what I need to hear. And when you run things in stereo, you will naturally run things lower when you're yeah. using both ears uh, in, you will naturally run things lower, um, keyboards, guitars, everything kind of panned in a way that, uh, is natural to what's happening on the platform. You will naturally run your in ears lower, which leads me to my next thing with you. Uh, you know, I go to churches a lot of times and they pop one ear out. So talk a little bit about why that is so, um, you know, I'll use the word dangerous, it, I, maybe it's not dangerous, but why it um, is not helpful for your ears and longevity. We'll put it that way. Well, you're absolutely right. You were saying we have two ears and I usually, I, because I'm, I'm usually talking to people uh, in, in the church uh, area, I will say it is a sin to do one ear only because <laughs> it's God a sin. gave you two ears and we need to honor God's purpose for your life. So take that into consideration. But basically when you take one year out, you are going to try to overcompensate uh, the sound. So first of all, when you hear, and I know this, I'm a worship pastor. I want to hear the congregation. I love hearing the room. It's very important for me. But if I take one year out, now I'm going to try to compensate in this ear what I hear on this side. And also even the sound that, you know, your body receives back the, the, the vibrations of the sound, all of that is being trying to be computed, you know, in your, in your mind and you're trying to make sense of, of it all. So you're going to start pushing a lot of volume over here to, to compensate and make, make it even. So this ear is going to be damaged in a lot of people. They have ringing ears when they leave church because of that after playing all morning or a worship night. Uh, and I understand. So one of, one of the things that I would like to, to, to tell people who like to pull one ear out, usually singers like that more than anybody else. The reason they do that, there are a few reasons. One of the reasons is I would say they probably got the wrong sound signature. They bought the wrong idiom monitors for them, and they just don't like how it sounds. And 
by the first song, second song, the ears out. And you see this not only in churches, you see this across. Just watch any concert, you're going to see the singer pulling one ear out. That's one thing. The other thing is, uh, at churches, we don't spend enough time mixing properly. So we don't really have a sound check. We have a line check, which is we get there. I can hear you. I can hear you. can hear you. can hear you. Okay, let's go. And then the click starts and we start the song. So it's really important to say, hey, hold on. I need to adjust my mix. This is not sound correctly. And if you don't, you, you're not going to want to keep both ears in. The only reason you're going to keep one ear in is because there is a click and a guide telling you where to go. You, and you want to make sure you're singing with everybody else. The number one reason that I get that singers pull their ears out is they feel closed off to what's going yeah. on around them. And, and I think what Tiago is saying is longevity of one ear is the problem. You're just going to crank it up. I get it. You know, if you're up at the front of the platform and the crowd's clapping and you want to get some of that, you may pull an ear out just to kind of hear what's going on. Or maybe the pastor walked up and they're not in your mix. So you need to pull it out. We all understand that we're not saying, Hey, plug it 24, seven, 365. But the more you can have that stereo mix in two ears will help you. But then when people say, Hey, but it just, everything just feels closed off to me. Mm -hmm. How do you fix that? Well, how do you help them feel the crowd and hear the crowd and hear some of the things that they just feel like they can't hear when they got two ears in? There are a few different ways to, to work with that. One of them, ultimate ears actually offers something called the ambient feature. So what we're going to do, we're going to make a hole small hole in the in the bottom over here which is a canal that allows a little bit of the ambience uh to actually bleed in um i use that in all my in-ear monitors when i'm leading worship i want that uh it's it's not every church that i go to that's gonna have a good setup of ambient mics which is the next thing that i'm gonna talk about so the ambient feature really helps is it enough? No, I could use a little more, but it helps tremendously. This is why when Tiago says you got to get the right in ear for you, you wouldn't want a drummer to have the ambient feature. That is correct. He would want full seal, but a singer may want it, right, Tiago? Yeah. So I, I, I think that's important for you to realize that, you know, the in-ear piece that you're getting changes depending on what your role is. Uh, in the band. Yeah, and But this feature can be added on any of our models. Oh, wow. Very cool. Yeah, it's just an add-on that we do, and uh, it's, it's simple. So the next thing is, I would say, is the ambient mics. It's very important to have that. Um, Earthworks makes amazing ambient mics. Uh, there are a lot of other options, honestly. You can try... And it, but it is important to try to get a good ambient mic. And when you say ambient mic, you're talking a microphone that's that's not in the PA. That is a correct. microphone that's only for your ears, that's picking up the audience yeah. and some of the things that you would naturally hear if you didn't have the in-ears in. That's what you're talking about, right? Yeah. Sometimes it is also um, called crowd mics. People sometimes say that. <laughs> audience mics, audience crowd mics, mics yeah. yeah. It is so, so a few things about ambient mics that I would like to say. One, first of all, I'm not an audio engineer. <laughs> they will probably speak better about that on how to properly set up uh, mics. But people sometimes just put any kind of mic and they expect to, them to, to behave uh, nicely. That is not always the case. Sometimes you're going to set up a microphone and if you don't EQ the mic, properly if you don't compress the mic properly and if you don't give enough enough level of the mic it's not gonna sound good uh, <laughs> what we're saying here is don't throw an sm58 in the sound yes, booth. i've seen it <laughs> <laughs> yeah and what's funny about that is the the singers are up there singing and somebody in the sound booth starts to talk really loud <laughs> <laughs> they hear it in their ears. It's the funniest thing yeah. in the world. Anyway, I got sidetracked. The other thing about ambient mics that for me, it is an experience that 
I've had just the best way that I've found. Okay. Uh, it is if a lot, most setups that you see of ambient mics are far right, far left. That's how they put the ambient mics. This is not my favorite and it is not the most effective in my opinion, because that's not how we hear our ears. Don't they don't hear that wide. We don't have that spectrum that wide. So the best setup in my, in my experience for microphones are dead center on stage. I know it doesn't always look amazing, uh, but you can get some small mics and maybe blend in with a little planter or something. I don't know, but that's the best setup if you can cross them. So they are uh, aligned prop properly. Uh, it's a, what is it called? Is it X, Y? Yeah. Like the X, Y or the cross pattern. Yeah. Um, yeah. You can also, a lot of times the lip of the stage, you can hide it underneath the lip of the stage. Yeah. You want to be a little careful with that. So you don't get the rumble and things of yeah. that nature. That's where EQ comes in yes. trying to get rid of some of that low end, uh, rumble. Some people put them on the sides of the stage. Um, uh, it's a little bit more re looks better, but, uh, it, like you said, like Tiago said, it could, it could throw the perspective, um, off a little bit. I think the bottom line here though, is have audience mics. Yes. It's important to have audience mics that are true, uh, ambient microphones, um, not vocal microphones that you just put out, but mics designed, um, like, you know, AKG 414 or Earthworks makes a few models that are really nice yeah. uh, to be used as audience mics and have those put into the mix uh, so that the artist is, is more likely to leave their, their ears in. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm on wedges, Tiago, and I'm trying to transition to my team to in-ears. Um, what's, what's my best first step? The best thing that you can do is to make sure you have the right soundboard, the right equipment that is going to be able to handle that. And I say this because if you don't, you're not going to have enough monitor lines uh, uh, for the team, unless your church is just you and another player, <laughs> it's, you're going to really lack that. So the, the first thing, if you're doing the church, you're going to have to do that. Now, if, if, uh, if the church is already set up to have that kind of thing, then your best thing will be to uh, make sure that uh, you're going to have, where are you going to plug your in-ears, right? After, after you have your soundboard. A lot of people think that they need to have expensive wireless systems, which, trust me, I am an advocate for wireless, good wireless systems. I, I would not use anything that is not sure or sennheiser the good ones because it can't if you have this in your ears and they for some reason the frequency gets out of sync in those wireless devices it can really mess you up you can hear uh, a ma some really terrible noise in your ear and you don't want that but i would say the cheap way to do this is to go wired um and if you're not a person that moves a lot on stage for example, the keyboard player can go wired. The drummer can go wired. Most, most likely the bass player can go wired. Electric guitar who has a pedal board, is probably not going to be going a lot of places, can go wired. That way you're going to already save a lot, of, a lot of money. There are some great cheap uh, options to do that. And then from there, you're going to have to look for some good India monitors and, uh, and start learning on how, how to prepare your mix and, and, and use it. Yeah. So I think to recap starts with the console, right? Make sure you have enough outputs to be able to run stereo, to be able enough inputs to get those audience mics into the, into the console. Uh, and then what Tiago said, I think is important. Like you don't have to go wireless out of the gate. Maybe you start with your band on in-ears, get them wired up and moving in the right direction. And then maybe you go wireless with your worship team. So you can kind of step into this a little bit. Yeah, you know, I disagree with you on the electric guitar thing, though. I, I've worked with a lot of electric guitar players. They're going to have to be wireless. Yeah. <laughs> they like to run around and thrash and jump up and down. That sounds good. No, I, I, I'm not against that. I love that. I'm just saying if you want to start with a low budget, which most yeah. people do, 
you're going to have to learn how to use properly the resources that you have. I agree with you. I just, most electric guitar players have an ego. They have to be wireless. <laughs> Uh, so, Tiago, we talked a little bit about multiple drivers in the church tech tip segment. Uh, you hit on it a little bit here. Yeah. Um, you know, let's spend a little bit more time on the multiple driver side of things, yeah. um, because I, I've I've bumped into singers, you know, that say, hey, I feel like it doesn't sound good because I don't have eight drivers or I don't have six drivers. And for me, I'll give you my opinion first, uh, you know, the instruments is where I tend to lean more towards the multiple drivers, uh, whereas the vocals, and this is where I'm going to let you speak to it. How many drivers do the vocalists need in order to, to do what they what they've got to do out there and sing and, you know, be on tone, pitch and all that? I don't necessarily would say they need a specific number of drivers. I would say uh, I would still probably say. Let's try to find what is the best, what kind of sound is going to work for your ears best. With that being said, I have found that a lot of vocalists, they are, they found their sweet spot with three drivers, three or four drivers. That's where they usually are very happy. They like found, I got over here. This is what I want to be. Um, if you are a person who have critical hearing, who knows what you're doing, the more drivers you add just gives you more opportunity to put the mix in the right place. So then it doesn't matter. Like it really depends. So for example, I th our best seller is the UE11. Uh, the UE11, if you read online, is gonna say it's for drummers and bass players. And I think that scares people a lot. Uh, that's the one that I'm using here. And that's the one that I've been using. It was my first pair, uh, the UE11s. A lot of people use the UE11s and they love it. Singers, uh, they use the UE11 or band. And they, the UE11 is, is a, it's a four drivers. And um, it's, it's just, it sounds like a, a front of house. It's a very full range. So that's what I think attracts people to it a lot. Now, if you go from up from there is the U18 plus, it's going to have a different sound signature. Each, each time you go up in driver is not necessarily better. It can be better if you, if you know what you're doing, if you, if you uh, are, are more experienced. Sometimes if you buy something that is very expensive, but it's not going to make sense because you didn't learn how to properly prepare what you need to prepare it's not going to make sense so we have a uh, six drivers we have uh, uh, uh eight drivers the ue live is great as well and now we have a ue premiere with 21 drivers uh, i'll tell you a little bit of the, uh, my first experience with the premiere uh the week that we were releasing the, the premiere i actually took them with me to church to lead and i'll tell you I plugged it in on my mix that I already had used the previous week. And I, it was really hard for me because I wasn't thinking that I was going to need more time to dial in the mix correctly. But it has so much separation that my mix that I usually use with the UE Live, which is A drivers, was not. <laughs> It liked the it liked that UE live thing there. I know. <laughs> Shot I off fireworks behind but, you. <laughs> but uh, but the the mix that I was using with the UE live did not work properly with the premiere. So what at that day I know that I had a terrible experience with my India monitors. Should I go ahead and blame the UE premiere and say it's terrible in ears? No, I didn't do my homework. I got to church. We only had three minutes to get things ready and get it going. The following week, I brought them back and I started my mix from the ground up. I zeroed everything and I started and then I dialed in correctly. And then it was really, really amazing. So what, what I, want to, I want you to, to learn from that experience is that the more drivers you have might require you to have more attention on how you're mixing. A lot of people, if you, if you work, if you 
are singing, leading worship, or on tour with an audio engineer that mixes your ears, that makes it a lot easier for everybody because that person is going to be responsible to help you. But if you're responsible for doing it yourself, then you need to own that and understand I need time to work on this thing and make sure it's dialed uh, correctly. So those drivers, they can respond and give you the right sound that you're looking for, that you were, that you paid so much money, so much money to have. So it, it that's basically like the more drivers, the more attention you're gonna you're gonna need to have with your mix. They're gonna sound amazing. I hear things on the UE Premiere that I've never heard anywhere. In like it's amazing the detail that you can hear but it requires me to dial in correctly. Does that make sense? It does. And I think what you're basically saying is if you're a vocalist, um, you don't need 21 drivers. If you're a vocalist, you, you're probably fine with two or three. Um, and then if you're a band member, maybe you need a little bit more, especially like the bass who wants to hear a little bit more detail. But at the end of the day, if you go from, you know, just the basic set to a three driver set to an eight driver set, allow time to remix it so that it sounds right. Because if you're a bass player and you're getting eight drivers now or 21 drivers, you're going to get more time or need more time to mix that because it's going to sound different. Yeah. It's going to have a different tone. It's going to have a different way that it comes across and things of that nature. But but talking about the mix there. Um, I'm on the platform. I'm singing. You mentioned earlier, you know, they, you know, you talk to singers and they have like click, uh, guide, guitar, acoustic guitar, and themselves. And typically themselves is cranked up like, you know, 150 dB. <laughs> but talk for a little bit about what do I need in my mix to be successful? So I'm, I'm looking out there at the front of house audio engineer. He's mixing for me. I'm a small church. Uh, he's a volunteer. She's a volunteer. What do I need to get in my mix to be successful? Do I need the full, you know, 40 channels in my mix? No. Because uh, in, in my opinion, that can start to muddy things up and make it difficult to do what you need to do as a singer. Or, and we'll talk from a singer's perspective. Or what, what exactly do I need in my mix to be successful? Okay. For us, from a singer's pr perspective, I have found that for pitch reference, I sing in better pitch every time I can hear the bass well mixed in my ears. Not extra loud, just in the right place. That's where it gives me the best pitch reference. And a lot of people don't, don't think that's the case. The other day I was asked to mix from a house for a church and I did it. And then I front of house was sounding good and it was before the service started. And I start checking people's mixes to hear what they had in the mix. And this one singer, she was singing a little bit of sharp and I could not believe it. She only had a little bit of the click, her voice and guitar. And I'm like, Oh Lord. So I didn't tell her anything. I literally just start mixing for her and starting some stuff, adding some, some stuff for her. So I added the bass, I added a little bit of the keys, and I give a little bit of drums, not exaggerating, a little bit, just so she could like be singing with the right tempo uh, and, and feel natural. Sometimes if you don't have drums playing in your ears because you feel like, oh, that's going to bother me too much, and you only have the click, it doesn't sound natural. You start singing a lot more mechanically. Uh, and if you're behind, yeah, and if you're when behind, you're singing, yeah. it's hard to grab pitch and tone. And but it, it was amazing to see that a little bit of adding a little bit of the band, a little bit of the bass, and and I didn't exaggerate like I would do. Probably would do more for me. I added a little bit, but it fixed her pitch. Like within a few seconds, she was able to get the reference that she needed. So. I think it's important for when I start my mix, the first thing that I do, first of all, is to, uh, to, if I'm starting from the ground up, I get the master volume and I go to probably like 90% on the master volume, not, not on the, on the bell pack. If I'm mixing somewhere else, like, uh, on the, on the iPad or something like this, and then I will go. I start adding the channels that I need. And the first thing that I add is drums. 
I put the drums where I feel like they need to be, not too loud, just in the right place. And then I add the click track, and then I see where they are in reference with, with the drums. And then uh, I will use sometimes, because I lead worship, I want to know where things are. I will add a little bit of the tracks. I don't do all the tracks. If if they're coming together, sure, I will have to put them all, but I will don't I don't use a lot of it. It's just a tiny, so I can have a reference. But if they come separately, I don't use them all. I just do a little bit of what I feel like I need from the tracks. And then, for example, things that don't bother me in the tracks, if they are too much, it is the, um, sometimes they have a synth bass uh, in the tracks that is just unnecessary for me from what I'm doing. So I don't add the kind of stuff or percussion that I pre-recorded. I don't necessarily add that to, to my mix. And then I'll start adding, you know, my guitar, my voice and people around me. Depends on how many BGVs you have. I don't add them all. I will have maybe two BGVs singing along with me. If I have six people singing, I don't need them all. I only need, you know, maybe two uh, to help me sing, sing along. Yeah, to, to give you reference. I mean, it sounds like you add a little bit of rhythm in there, get some bass so that you can get the right low end tone yeah. to it, keyboard so that you can understand what key you're in, pitch, tone, all that. And then some singers, maybe soprano, you know, whatever you need to kind of keep yourselves um, singing together and, uh, and with each other. Um, but you definitely don't need everything. And I think that's, um, I think that's key, especially if you're mixing yourself and you have the ability to kind of just bring yourself up. Uh, you want to be able to mix some things in there that'll help you perform well. Also, be careful and be mindful of how much ambient mic you're going to add to the mix. Because when you get to church, there is nobody in the audience and you're adding ambient and it's probably... It probably becomes very, everything becomes very, the room becomes very big. And people get there and the sound will change. The sound will change for many, many reasons because people are there. There are a lot of bodies there assimilating uh, the sound. But uh, also the ambient markets are going to change. So you need to learn, like maybe you didn't do it right for this one service. You can fix for the following service or for the future reference, you know, oh, I need to have a little less for the service when the service actually starts. Yeah, audience mics are important, but they can also get you in trouble pretty quickly. Uh, they can make your mix washy or, you know, the audience is so loud that you can't yeah. um, you can't follow um, the actual band. So it's good to give you reference to the room, uh, but you don't want it to overpower uh, the mix, which is why if you have the ability to, to use compression and things of that nature, it'll help you uh, on the audience side of things, being able to kind of hear what's going on. So Tiago, uh, tell our audience again, if they want to get in touch with you, you have a lot of knowledge and experience. It sounds like you help everybody through the process. How do they get a hold of you? Uh, and how do they buy ultimate ears? You can, uh, reach me at my in Uh, there is a chat that a live chat that will usually ping directly on my phone and I'll be able to chat with you. You can also, there is a, uh, there is a phone number that I, you can call. It's going to call me directly. Um, I will leave a link uh, with, uh, with David. He can put on YouTube uh, the link that you're going to have my full contact that you can download on your phone and save, and you can reach out to me at any time. I would love to help talk to you. If you have any questions, specific, specific questions, maybe for your church or for how you're using India monitors, I would love to help. You don't have to necessarily by you can just call me to get to know me and talk to me ask questions you can also ask questions about other gear uh around uh you know any monitors or any gear in church that we usually use i will be able to give you some uh pointers and and uh i'd love to help for sure so if you're watching this on youtube just go to myinears.com or you can go into the notes section there'll be a contact link uh, for Tiago. Again, that's myinears.com. He will hook you up and make sure you get what you need. You can also go to Instagram 
and uh, follow him at my in ears. Tiago, thank you for coming on and educating our audience on in ears and how to use them. Pleasure. Well, that wraps things up for today's episode. I can't wait to talk to you on the next Tech Arts Podcast. Until then, I'm David Leuschner signing off by wishing you a great day and praying God blesses every moment of your week. See you soon. You have been listening to the Tech Arts Podcast presented by Digital Great Commission Ministries. DGCM is a 501c3 nonprofit that was started to help churches with all things technical. Whether you need help building a team, finding the right gear, or just a better understanding of the church tech world, DGCM is here for you. Find out more about our free on-site visits, reports, and consulting by going to audiovideolighting.com. Digital Great Commission Ministries will help you run your church service like a pro. Find out more at audiovideolighting.com. From sold out stadiums to intimate live performance venues, sound engineers agree on one thing for the best digital mixing consoles for live sound. The only name that matters is Digico. As the recognized worldwide standard for live audio mixing, Digico consoles are renowned for their industry-leading sound quality and ease of use. Whether your application is in a church, broadcast, theater, corporate, sports, or installed sound, Digico offers compact and affordable products from the S21 all the way up to the pioneering power of the Quantum 852. Digico delivers the workflow, the feature set, and the absolute reliability that the world's biggest tours and programs have come to rely upon. If you're looking for a sound console, look to Digico for your answer. For more information on Digico, go to digico.biz. That's digico.biz. From front of house to center stage, for over 25 years, Earthworks microphones have sculpted the sounds of your favorite concerts, venues, and performances. Earthworks Audio is a sponsor of the Tech Arts Podcast. We are so happy to have them on board and excited to promote the new Earthworks SR117 vocal mic and capsules. To find out more about Earthworks Audio or to get your hands on this mic, go to earthworksaudio.com. That's earthworksaudio.com. Capturing emotion with sound earthworksaudio.com Sermon Shots Church Specific AI Sermon highlights don't go unnoticed Easily transform your sermons into 10 plus bite sized clips ready for social media It doesn't stop there Refine each clip by adding or removing video sections Give them your unique touch with colors, fonts, design edits and create the goosebump moment with background music Elevate your message and reach hearts locally and globally Start today by going to sermonshots.com um. Luminex Network Intelligence manufactures data distribution equipment for professional lighting, audio, and video applications. Luminex offers a complete range of network switches, converters, nodes, and DMX splitters providing AV designers and technicians with cutting-edge technology to build complete data distribution systems for churches, big events, or large venues. Through products like the Luminode, Luminex keeps it simple and allows the user to easily easily control what they need to do or how they need to do it. Whatever your configuration is today or whatever your configuration is in the future, Luminex is designed for today but built for tomorrow. Luminex Network Intelligence, AV networking made easy. For more information, go to aclighting.com. That's aclighting.com.